Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father.
Jerusalem, the holy city, is a special place to a lot of people. In Psalm 122, the Bible tells us, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It seems strange that a holy city would be a place of strife and unrest, but it's true. If you were to go to Jerusalem today and visit the site of the ancient Jewish temple, you'd see lots of religious people trying to worship, but you'd also see lots of heavily armed soldiers trying to keep the peace. This is the same Jerusalem that Jesus entered almost 2,000 years ago. He came into the city during a busy Jewish holiday. Worshippers were everywhere, and soldiers were trying to keep the peace. The Jews were tired of taking orders from Roman soldiers and paying taxes to Caesar. They wanted a leader of their own choosing, a Messiah, who would usher in the golden age of Jewish power and prosperity. The news of Jesus' great miracles had spread throughout Israel. Everyone was talking about him. So when Jesus entered Jerusalem during the Passover week, the people were ready. Hosanna! 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 When I saw how the crowd responded to Jesus, I was so happy for my son. The angel told me this day would come, but I could still hardly believe it. I was so excited for him. Jesus deserved every bit of the honor he was getting. If they knew him as I knew him, they would have crowned him long ago. My dear precious boy was a servant to all of us, and now he would be king. I had warned Pilate that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. As high priest, I had demanded that he take action. But Pilate, for his part, just sort of chuckled and replied, Oh, noble Caiaphas, I, I do not possess your great skill for handling such uh, uh, complex religious squabbles. Well, there's going to be trouble. I can feel it. Some of this, this rabble even called Jesus, they, they, they call him the Messiah. Can you imagine? First he's a carpenter and, and now he's a Messiah? The fools. The poor, deluded fools. This crowd would lift Jesus up. But mark my word, I will lay him low. Simon Peter, follow me. Those were the first words that Jesus spoke to me. How much I've seen since then. The healings, the miracles. He is the Christ. Now at last, the people see it too. We are all shouting, Hosanna, together. This is what I've been waiting for. We are going to crown Jesus the king, and I, Peter, will reign with him. Hosanna, Hosanna to the king.
It was cold that night, a wisp of cloud half shaded the moon, still, quiet. I had never seen him like this before. He prayed feverishly on his knees, on his face. He said it again. Not my will, but thine be done. For a moment, I, I thought I saw another person with him, comforting him, a tall, shining figure in terrifying white. But then suddenly my Lord stood over me as I lay beneath a tree. Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour with me? Ugh, my eyes were so heavy. I had promised to follow Jesus to the grave if necessary. And yet such a simple task as staying awake I found so difficult. He spoke again. The hour is come. And then Jesus looked beyond me into the dark. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. He that betrays me is at hand. And then I heard them. The clamor of an angry mob shattered the stillness of the garden. And at the head of the intruders, Judas, one of our own, the traitor approached us, trembling slightly. He whispered, Hail, Master. And then he betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away. And what did we do? His faithful disciples, we forsook him and ran off into the night. Cowards, every one of us. And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Now we will silence this blasphemer once and for all. I cannot allow a, a self-proclaimed Messiah to defy our religious system and get away with it. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Thirty pieces of silver was a cheap price to pay for peace in Jerusalem. But Peter followed him afar off under the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. They struck him. They spat upon him. I huddled by the fire, trying to keep warm in the cold night. I didn't know what to do. I had seen Jesus perform many great miracles. Why wouldn't he save himself? You were with Jesus of Galilee. No, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you not one of his disciples? No, I don't know him. Surely you are one of them. Your speech betrays you. I know not the man. The cock crew, and my Lord was looking at me. No, it is as he said. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. I did my best to stir the people of the city against Jesus, and it worked. By the time we reached Pilate, the Roman governor, the people were in a frenzy. Oh, Pilate, for his part, did his best to try to pacify the angry mob, but they would have none of it. You see, they were thirsty for blood. Jesus' blood. And Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Crucify him. Crucify, Crucify him. him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. 
crucify him. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, or rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then Pilate had Jesus beaten so severely that even I could hardly recognize him. But even that wasn't enough. After what seemed an eternity of torture and suffering, Pilate, 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 demanded that Jesus, my son, be crucified.
and they crucified Jesus. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They lifted Jesus high on a cross. And where was I? Hiding in a dark room, crouching in a shadowy corner like a frightened mouse. I jumped at every sound, thinking that the soldiers were coming for me next. I should have been at his cross. I just couldn't. I couldn't force myself to go. Hmm. <laughs> Look at him. He said that he could destroy the temple and build it in three days. Look at him. He said he was the, he said he was the son of God. Well, I have lifted him up so that all may see how powerful this pretender truly is. The same people who earlier this week cried, Hosanna to the king, now enjoy the spectacle of his execution. Look at him, nailed to a worthless piece of wood. Gagging and gasping for air like any other common criminal. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. In just a few months' time, no one will even remember your name. And there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother. thought it would actually kill me to see Jesus on that cross. But I had to be there. He was my child. I was always there for him when he needed me since the day he was born. When he was sick as a little boy, I would hold him close, rub his head, sing him to sleep. Now, now I could do nothing, nothing but watch his blood run down that awful cross. And Jesus said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost.
when the even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus, and he bought fine linen and took him down. It's over. Look at his cold, lifeless body. No man has ever suffered so. I can still hear his cries of agony as they pounded the nails through his hands. Hands that never did anything but good. They healed the sick. They gave sight to the blind. They broke bread for the hungry. These strong carpenter hands that I knew would care for me the rest of my days are now bloody and torn, lifeless. Those kind, loving, beautiful hands. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. Jesus may be out of the way, but I am certain that his followers will be up to some new mischief. Perhaps. Perhaps. They, they may even try to steal the body of Jesus and, and somehow claim that he has risen from the dead. I must see to it that the pilot has a guard posted at the tomb at once. I remained in hiding, too scared to go back out onto the street, not knowing what Caiaphas was doing next. What would I do now? Who even was this Jesus anyway? Did it really even matter? Oh, nothing made sense. I just wanted to go back home to Galilee. It's been two days since Jesus' death been drifting in a sea of despair. Every waking moment, I see my son on that cross, crying out in pain and struggling to breathe. When I try to close my eyes and sleep, the details just become more vivid. The blood, the cursing, the darkness, the wickedness of those evil men that killed him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they found the stone rolled away, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen." And they returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven. Mary scared us all when she burst into the room shouting, The tomb is empty! The tomb is empty! John and I took off as fast as we could, and we didn't stop until we got there. <sighs> yes, the tomb was empty, and the linen cloth that they had wrapped around Jesus' body lay perfectly in place, as though his body had just vanished dimly. The words of Jesus began to come back to me and whisper a faint glimmer of hope. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. The soldiers who had been guarding Jesus' tomb came running to me, scared for their lives and very confused. You see, they thought that they saw an angel come down from heaven and roll away the stone, and, and they thought that when they had looked inside that the tomb was empty, but it was so dark, and they were so tired, they needed my help to remember the details. So I gave them some money, a, a rather large sum of money, and told them exactly what they saw. While they slept, the disciples of Jesus came in the darkness, rolled away the stone, and stole his body. It really is that simple. An empty tomb. 
empty tomb? Could it be? Mary Magladen said she saw angels, two men in shining white with dazzling faces. Maybe she just imagined it. No, it's possible. I know. I remember the angel God sent to me over 30 years ago. I can still hear his voice. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And he shall reign forever. Oh, praise Jehovah. He's alive.
Rumors were swirling like a wildfire, and nobody knew what to believe. Later that evening, I gathered all the disciples together to try to figure out who had seen what and what to do next. Most of us were still afraid of our own shadow. So we locked all the doors and made sure all the windows were covered, not knowing if Caiaphas would come after one of us or all of us. Then came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. I felt the scars in his hands and the wounds in his side, and my utter despair was transformed into joy. Our king was alive, and I would follow him no matter where he led me. I just don't understand it. It turns out these rumors have been harder to kill than Jesus ever was. His followers keep making up these stories of sightings of their, their dead Messiah. And that small band of men that followed Jesus around everywhere, his, his disciples, I, I, I can't explain it, but they're changed men. Uh, they're not timid children anymore. My, my threats don't even begin to silence them. They're bold and they're, they're confident. Even threats of death only seem to spur them when I, I just don't understand. <sighs> what could have changed them? Most of the disciples would eventually be martyred for preaching the gospel and telling everyone they met about the resurrection of Jesus. Why would these men so readily give their lives? Because we knew the truth. Jesus Christ arose from the dead. I saw him. I knew he was God, my God, and no power on earth would silence me. To my shame, three times I denied my Lord. I will not deny him again. And Jesus spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. He lives, and I live again because of him. I saw him carried up into the clouds, lifted up to the very heavens. My Lord lives Teacher, master, savior, king. He has forgiven my doubt, my denial, my sin. And thank God, he has not left me. As he promised, he is with me always. He sits at the right hand of God. My son, my Lord, my king. Even unto the ends of the earth, I will sing forth the praises of him who has called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. The angel said he would come again. Even so, my Lord Jesus, come. We lift up your name and give you glory, both, both now, now and, and forevermore. forevermore.